Okay, it's good to be back. I haven't posted in a couple of weeks, but not because I haven't been working on stuff, but because everything is releasing on Black Friday, I guess. Uh, so you guys will see a bunch of videos probably like back to back to back to back, which I don't really like doing, but I don't know what else to do. I mean, these companies are coming out with products left and right, but the timing is not always ideal. Anyway, about a year ago, I reviewed an 85 millimeter f1.8 lens from Makey. And here we are with another different upgraded model. This is also a full frame 85 millimeter, this time an f1.4. And that lens was $199, the f1.8. This one is $470 US, so significantly more money, but still, it's an interesting lens, kind of weird. So let's check it out. This is a pre-production model that was sent to me for review, so it should, in theory, be better in small ways in the final version. I won't go through the packaging as I don't know how accurate it will be to the retail version, but I got a lens, some lens caps, and a very cheap feeling plastic lens hood. When I took this lens out of the box for the first time, immediate impression was that it felt cheap. It had that kind of rough plastic texture to it that's not premium like some G Masters. It feels just just budget. And that is interesting to me because we are used to seeing cheap manual lenses with excellent build quality that's all metal in most cases with great tolerances. Yet here we are with a significantly more expensive lens that is seemingly all plastic and cheaper feeling. And for what? Weight savings? I'm not sure. This lens is 744 grams, which is pretty heavy, almost two pounds, but my guess is that about 80% of that weight is the glass elements inside. And I will say that in terms of build, this lens is a significant step up over the f1.8 version, but that's not saying much. Starting at the rear, there is a metal mount, electronic connections, a USB-C port for firmware updates, and an orange weather sealing gasket. It doesn't seem like the rest of the lens is weather sealed, however. The aperture ring is next, and it's a very clicky, cheap sounding and feeling ring. I like that it has clicks, but I think it could have been implemented better. It moves from f1.4 to f16, and then makes a longer click into A or auto aperture. And the only thing worse than the sound that it makes when you turn it is the other sound that it makes when you turn it. Take a listen. It's almost as if the aperture blades have to do a cycle or something to move from one aperture to another. I don't know. There's a Makey logo and 85mm 1.4 here, and on the other side there is an autofocus hold button as well as a cheap feeling autofocus manual focus switch. Around the bottom there are a bunch of logos, and this lens is made in China. Now the focus ring is also a bit disappointing. It doesn't feel particularly well damped, and it has a lot of plastic on plastic noise. Granted, you probably won't be using this manual focus ring since this lens does have autofocus. Around the front, there is a large front lens element with a bunch of info. Makey logo, autofocus lens, lens specs, minimum focus of about one meter, and a 77 millimeter filter thread. Inside, there are 13 elements in eight groups and an STM autofocus motor, so a stepper motor. The lens looks pretty standard on my a7C. It is a bit on the larger and heavier side, but normal for an 85 f1.4. And I guess I forgot to mention why I have all this nonsense behind me. I am in the process of remodeling my studio here in my house, so uh, look out for a video probably after this one. We'll see if I get it done in time. Uh, so that'll be coming out shortly. That will explain a little bit of this. Anyway, in terms of this lens and autofocus, it is still a little bit on the noisy side, definitely for video work. I would not recommend using onboard audio. However, it is better than the f1.8 version, which was even worse than this. I've been traveling a lot lately, so I took this lens over with me to Oregon and Maui. Now, all these photos are straight out of the camera. No picture profiles, no editing, no color correction. This is exactly what you could expect with this lens if everything is turned off, auto white balance, etc., etc. These are JPEGs straight out of the camera. Ready, set, go.
All right, so where to begin? Now, the first couple of photos that I took with this lens on my camera, I thought there was something wrong with my camera settings because they weren't coming out like I expected them to come out. But I had to double check and triple check that I had all of my picture profiles set to off, all of my colors set to normal, and in fact, they were. And the Makey website does mention that they used two coatings on the front and the rear of this lens to quote, produce more realistic colors, but I don't know if that's the case. What is actually happening is that this lens is producing images that look extra punchy, contrasty, and warm. I would be taking portraits, look at my camera screen, and I was baffled as to how it came out that way. It's strange, it's unique, but if you like the look that this lens creates, it could be the one for you. In terms of sharpness, it is more than adequate. It won't give a Sigma Art or a G Master a run for its money, but again, this lens is significantly cheaper than those two options. It's good in the center and good in the corners as well wide open. Colors again are punchy and warm and look filtered, which you may or may not like. It does make skin tones quite tan looking. Now as far as distortions, chromatic aberration is pretty well controlled, one of the better performances that I've seen from a Makey lens. There is still a little bit of green and purple fringing, especially wide open, but it's not as bad as it could be. Vignetting is also not really an issue from my samples, which is good. Flare, however, is pronounced. It does cause lower contrast levels, some purple and green ghosting, a little bit of yellow and red in there as well. Bokeh, on the other hand, is handled very well. The lens produces nice, creamy, pleasing out-of-focus backgrounds. The bokeh balls do cat-eye in the corners and edges, but in general, they are smooth, no onion rings, no issues. So overall, it's a good performing lens and it's definitely a step up in terms of optical quality comparing it to the f1.8 version, but I have to mention autofocus performance because there were several times when I was using it where it would just struggle to lock onto the eyes in a group photo, for example. In fact, a few of the samples of Janessa are slightly out of focus, if you can tell, and this is hard to notice because on a small screen on your camera, it looks fine after you take it, but when you come home and see it on a larger display, it's just off. I would describe the autofocus speed as average, maybe equivalent to DSLRs from six years ago. It does hunt on a occasion and it's not the most reliable and when you force it to focus on something with a backlight it really doesn't like doing that. But who knows maybe this will be updated in firmware and even production models might see better performance. For me going from the Sigma 85 f1.4 autofocus to this Makey feels like a significant step down. But it all comes down to price and budget because there are a lot of competitors out in the full frame 85 millimeter range. You have Viltrox, you have Rokinon Samyang, those are kind of the budget options. Then you have Sony and you have Sigma that are a little bit more expensive. I would say that the selling point of this Makey 85 millimeter is definitely the colors, as long as you like the look that you get. And certainly this lens may go on sale in the future and present even more of a value to those who buy it. I think if it was about $300, maybe 350, it would sell very rapidly and easily. It might be more of a challenge at 470, but given how large the market is for full frame 85 millimeter, lenses, I think it should sell all right. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. If you are interested in reading more about this lens, I'll leave a link in the description below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all of your likes, all of your comments and your support. Stay tuned for more. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.